Hi, welcome to Town Meeting TV. My name is Stephen Heron. I'm here speaking today with one of our uh, most prestigious community producers, Don McDonald. And Don, we're talking baseball today, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going to, the, the, over the weekend, you had the state uh, championships, and uh, there were some interesting games, like always. Um, I'm going to start talking about the first off the uh, Division One game. Uh, that was a game between uh, uh, South Burlington and Champlain Valley, and uh, South Burlington scored six unearned runs in the first inning, uh, all with two outs, and uh, they were hi uh, highlighted by Shagden's base clearing triple. And uh, uh, Kelly went the distance for 90 pitches. That's a lot of pitches. Um, to guide the uh, Wolves 16 and three to the program's first title since 2018. CBU finished at 15 and five for the season and uh, three losses to uh, South Burlington. Um, now, Don, when, when you yeah. say an unearned run for those at home, does that mean someone who stole yeah. home base? Like, or is, well, when you said an unearned run? Unearned, yeah. It would be uh, the pitcher's not charged with the pitch, mm -hmm. with, with, whether it's uh, whatever it is. Um, say for it would be a um, say a walk or a, or another error in the field, something like that. Um, those are all unearned runs, and it's a different statistic. Mm -hmm. um, it's a positive statistics for a pitcher mm -hmm. and negative for the hitter. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how it works. That's uh, the interesting part. We're going to have a part on the section of the Division Two yep. Championship, which, uh, which had a, a major milestone this year. We really did, I, just from the reading of it. And I, um, the the uh, championship um, in Division Two uh, was uh, Middlebury against um, uh, Mount Abraham. And uh, it's an interesting story. Um, the Middlebury Tigers lost their first high school baseball state championship game before they won it. Um, I had a cop, I'm just reading through here. Um, you know, you say, what, what, how did that happen? Uh, well, Mount Abraham appeared to capture Saturday's Division II state final when a bases loaded walk in the bottom of the seventh inning, pushed across the deciding run. But the batter, instead of advancing to touch first base, turned toward his dugout, which of course was celebrating by that time, and out of the baseline, uh, and I kicked off the celebration, hugs and hard charging and this type of thing. After um, a quick umpire's meeting, uh, in the infield, the Mount Abraham batter was declared out, sending the game into extra innings. Mm -hmm. On the same play, Mount Abraham runners on first and second raced home with the uh, jubilant scrum and failed to take uh, their next base, which was also a rules violation, according to Jay Nichols, who is the uh, executive director of the Vermont Principals Association. It gave us all the momentum in the world, uh, Middlebury catcher Cotter Pocket said. We uh, knew the gods were giving us another chance, and uh, we weren't going to screw up at this time. Um, it's going to be great to have a Middlebury baseball banner in our gym. Uh, Middlebury starting pitcher Tucker uh, Mortar said, I'm just so proud of the battle that we got and the fight and uh, put together because we were state champions. Can't say enough about this team. 
It wasn't pretty today. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't pretty today. Um, Mrs. Sco well, Middlebury uh, has never won a state championship, according to this article. I've never, I, Middlebury has a lot of good teams. And mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, in the first inning, uh, our, uh, yeah, uh, Middlebury opened with a 2 nothing margin on uh, Alex Burry and Ryan Bouillard, RBI singles in the first inning of the fourth. Mount Abraham took the lead on a Brody uh, Barnard's uh, game tying a two run single down the left field line and a Tiger error. Um, Middlebury though responded swiftly on the next frame. Puckett placed an RBI triple uh, following Spurry's lead off uh, single and uh, start of the fifth. Tim Whitney then smashed the RBI single for a 4-3 Middlebury advantage. Um, Tiger comebacks appear in, this, in, the, in these playoffs and were crucial for Saturday, Moore said. These moments uh, that led up to the, this really helped us out. Moore, they said they were the bus. They, they proved it. Uh, South Burlington Baseball uh, won the uh, D1 title. Then in the seventh inning, the, the Eagles rallied with Tanner Castillo's uh, sharp hit to third, and uh, it turned into an infield single, game tying RBI. But then the bases loaded were a uh, walk that wasn't, that's what they want to call it, uh, the walk that wasn't, uh, setting the stage for the extras and giving Middlebury new life. So, um, this, is, so this is a real example of the importance of you, you have to touch the plate. Yeah, it's, I, there's I, there's I, nothing I, assumed. I, I was commissioner of uh, Babe Ruth baseball for several years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the plays that you see it enough time so you remember it. But by the same talking, you, you're talking high school kids, there are places they've never been before. Yeah. And uh, it, it's interesting, it really is. And uh, this, this uh, continued, uh, let's see, um, number eight, Middlebury seized an eight to seven victory over number six, Eagles Centennial Fields for the pro programs breakthrough championship. Uh, Mount Abe appeared to win on basis loaded walk, but uh, the batter started celebrating with teammates and left the baseline mm -hmm. and didn't immediately make up the first, you make it to first. The ums com um, ruled that he was out. Um, we then went to the eighth inning, tied at four. And uh, I just, let's see. And the Tigers roared from there. Plating three runs on the top of the eighth and then surviving Mount Abe's nervy rally attempt in the bottom of the frame. The number eight Middlebury seized on a 8-7 uh, victory over the uh, Eagles at Centennial Field for the program's breakthrough championship. So Middlebury. Middlebury won, and Middlebury, uh, Mount Anthony has a pretty good uh, baseball program, mm -hmm. and uh, Middlebury, Middlebury win, wins, but it's a little bigger school, you know, um, and this was really quite, quite the situation. We got a lot of runs scored, yeah. and of course, your pitching runs out on you the longer you go. Yeah. And uh, it, it is to take this opportunity in the extra innings. Yeah. To really rally when yeah. the energy had sort of run out for. Yeah. The, the, you just, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well. And that's and it's uh, yeah just good coaching. I mean, you, you also you, you have a lot of you know these are this is Division Two and we still have Division Three and Four. Now, Division Three was uh, BFA at Fairfax played White River 
Valley High School. Now, the White River, for me personally, the name is, okay, it's what was South Royalton High School, mm -hmm. Chelsea, um, uh, the other little Wickham, Wickham High School in Rochester. Mm -hmm. um, they were all in, in their own league and they were, you know, they were really good baseball team. They had a Legion team down there and won the Vermont championship. It also won, I believe either Babe Ruth uh, went to uh, a national tournament, I'm not sure, but um, anyway, these uh, two teams, the um, Middlebury, well, no, that's Division Two, Division Three, yeah, Division Three, uh, BFA Seven, BFA Fairfax Seven, White River Valley, nothing. Um, like I say, the uh, teams um, Fairfax seized their first state title since 2015. In other words, they do it pretty often. Yeah, uh, and they're competitive. Um, three years after JV, oh yeah. Um, for three years, uh, Fairfax, uh, BFA Fairfax was only able to have uh, enough kids or whatever for um, a JV season. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Fairfax wins the Division Three state championship, which is kind of cool. When you, when you say something Fairfax only had enough kids. So what is, in terms of Vermont high school sports, what is the distinguishing factor between a Division I team, a Division II yeah. team? Is it the population of the town? Yeah. Is it is and it the success state. of the program? And yeah. And, and the state. But, but these schools, what's happened is you've had some loss of population, young population. Yep. In these small schools, which have always been pretty much small, they're competitive, but they're small. And, and that's been um, a major issue statewide, not just in no, it's, it yeah, in the state of Vermont. Yeah. They had some rule changes as far as um, combining school districts. It was an economic uh, thing uh, a few years ago. And since then, Division Three and Division Four have kind of taken a hit as far as there's a lot of combine, you know, not a uh, combine so much as a lot of uh, schools just merged. Yep. Um, Kids White are River, traveling farther yeah, to get to um, school and may affect it, their right. ability to do extra The real perfect example, in my opinion, is Division Three is uh, Fairfax and R White River Valley. White River Valley takes in, I think, four schools down in that uh, central Vermont area. Uh, there's, um, yeah, there's... South Royalton, Chelsea, um, Rochester, I think, was one of them. I'm not sure if they, they didn't have enough for a graduating class one year, I think, you know, it was, yeah. you know. Um, and there's a uh, Whitcomb, I think, I left out. Anyway, um, that's the reason. It's, uh, in other words, the consolidation of, uh, schools and also programs like Burlington High School. This is a little stretch, but uh, Bur uh, Burlington High School and South Burlington High School have a combined football team. They're, they're, those are Division One schools, you know. Yeah. Granted, they're, um, they're they they have a lot of people that are um, from other other places that are uh, not up on football, you know, like soccer, ultimates, another sport that's been introduced. Um, and it's growing in popularity yeah, yeah. nationwide. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, a, that's an interesting school uh, or sport. Um, and they, well, they have lacrosse, but lacrosse has always been around. So. Yeah. Um, but uh, the other sport, the um, was this, uh, let's see, Ultimate, yeah, um, was just developed a few years ago. It's an interesting thing. I went to a school, um, Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey, oh, yeah. and that's where they, uh, 
started where they basically invented this uh, sport of ultimate, you know. And Mon I believe Montpelier was won the first state championship. Now this is a sport, I guess, I don't know anything about it, so I mm -hmm. shouldn't be saying anything, but um, it, it takes a lot of kids. It's almost, I think it's it almost does. the same yeah. number as yeah. football. But, Similar um, to track and field, I think the sort of acceptance rate yeah. and there's sort of a, not a lower bar barrier of entry, but like it, it's a it's a sport that is designed to yeah. have a maximum amount of people, which well, I think right. increases yeah. its popularity. Yeah, it, um, yeah, I, I have to get up and not because it's big, and you know, it's popular, and you know the other. Let's see now, we got Division Four, in baseball was Blue Mountain, and Leland and Gray Academy now. Blue Mountain is uh, the Wells River area, mm -hmm. um, and they're always competitive in every in every sport. Yeah. Um, that is one of the smallest schools in the state, mm -hmm. um, but uh, they're they're always there. And Leland and Gray is a school down in um, Townsend, Vermont. It's down near Brattleboro, and uh, it's an interesting school. It's one of the old academies. Mm -hmm. It goes back, you know, to the beginning of time, you know, basically. And um, that was a pretty, it was uh, six to three uh, with uh, Blue Mountain beating Lillian and Gray. Um, that was, uh, yeah. And uh, that's pretty good. Next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, uh, something that took place a few years back. 2016? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so really this good. was a collective group of Little League aged yeah. teams? Yeah. And, or, yeah or, were, or, um, or one team of... Little League uh, age, about 11 age. to 12. I, I mentioned, yeah, up till 12. They, they were, you know. Okay, what this, um, this was the uh, Vermonters make historic baseball trip to Cuba. Um, a team of Vermonters became the first American ball players to face the blistering fastballs and nasty changeup of Cuba's number two youth pitcher. 11 players from Burlington, Essex Junction, Shelburne, and Bristol traveled to uh, Cuba um, to play five games um, against local teams. The absence of a scoreboard at the Cuban ball field um, represented the great goal of forming friendships and creating cultural ties. And this was after President Obama had lifted yeah. the Cuban embargo. Uh, yeah, President Obama was, was was in at that time. He's he's the one that put this together, along with Senator Talahi. Um Anyway, uh, they were, well, yeah, the absence of scoreboard in the Cuban ball field represented the greater goal of forming friendships and creating cultural ties. In other words, it wasn't the end. Um, uh, the um, you know we beat you. Yeah, stuff it's an there. exhibition. Yeah. It's it's essentially a a a, 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 a delegation of child ambassadors. It's yeah, a more yeah, of a cultural uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. connection. Yeah. Um, Vermont assistant coach Tom Simon um, played catch with a 12-year-old pitcher Marcus Reyes prior to the game. Simon and Re said. Uh, Reyes pitches clocked in at 70 mile an hour and left his hand, his hand, Tom's hand, mm -hmm. um, swollen. Yeah. Uh, the Vermont team included Ozzy Coast, Will Gumble, Gumbro, and a gentleman, uh, Eli um, Boswick, Kyra Monks, uh, Andrew Goodrich, Ali Pudva, who I believe. Ali Pudva's playing for the Lake Monsters. Well, they're, they're, these these kids would be about college age now. Which yeah. is which is crazy right. thinking about the passage yeah, of time. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm um, yeah, pretty sure of that. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> uh, Nate uh, Agnew Cyrus uh, Perkman, August uh, Reinhardt, and Nolan Smith, uh, Nolan Simon. Uh, Jim Car Coach Jim Carter coached the team along with assistant coach uh, Tommy Simon, uh, Jeff uh, Goodrich from Essex, and Dave Boswick. Uh, Burlington-based Cuban-American Friendship Society, CAFS, which focuses on creating connections between U.S. and Cuban citizens, organized the trip. The nonprofit has offered professional and educational trips to Cuba since pro pro President uh, Barack Obama opened the people to people travel. The Vermonters traveled under academic visas and attended lectures at Cuban sports uh, complex uh, Jose uh, Martin Institute. Um, yeah, let's see here. Uh, I think the trips uh, like this really amount to uh, citizen diplomacy, said J Jared Carter, executive director of CAFS. Um, Coach Carter and uh, the Cuban, uh, Cubans um, extended their hospitality from start when he met with the uh, officials of the National Baseball Federation, the Cuban equivalent of Major League Baseball, uh, to uh, determine playing rules for the week. They agreed to no curveballs, no leads, no and seven inning games. And would those be standard terms across little league age right. games? No curveballs being right. common. Yeah. Well, a curveball would be so. It's you know there, there's. Yeah, um, yeah, it uh, it's not it's not good, but yeah, I mean they were applicable to the rule changes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, no curveballs, no leads, uh, and seven games. Yeah, the sportsmanship and goodwill extended beyond the rules of the game. Despite the language barriers, we were really able to uh, interact. Um, Car, uh, Cutter Monks, uh, who was, it was 12 at the time, so that was how many years ago? Six years ago? It was, it's about eight years ago. Yeah. About 20. Uh, despite the, yeah, Coach Carter. The players, coaches, and families found ways to connect, drawing the ball field on a, on a napkin to uh, indicate their positions and playing a game with soda cans and tops. Um, Monks, the first baseman, expressed gratitude for the welcome uh, that his team received from the uh, Cubans. He hoped they could someday, you know, come play in the U.S. Mm -hmm. My greatest takeaway on it was how friendly and open the Cubans were. That's what he said. Eli Boswick, 11, was a catcher from Essex Junction, had similar f feelings about the trip. It was. So incredible, we never forgot this experience for the rest of our lives, he said. Boswick also said he would remember the level of talent the Cuban teams had. I enjoy learning how to get better just by watching the Cubans play, he said. The Cuban baseball greats appeared at the ballpark each day to meet with the American team and to throw out ceremonial first pitches. The list included Carlos Tavares, center field for the uh, Cuban national team, Omar Linares, the uh, best third baseman in Cuban history, and Frank Camilo uh, Morgan, the uh, current starting pitcher on the national team. Morgan also pitches for the Havana Industrials of the Cuban Professional League. Um, Cuban teams had sharp pitching, stellar defense, solid hitting, speedy base running, but the Vermonters were able to compete each day due to accommodating rules. Vermont played a local Cuban team from a different part of Havana for each of the first four days. Their opponents were Habano del Est, um, Playo, Sierra, uh, Mariano,
So Don, what do you think is the cultural impact of a, of a trip like this? You see the other side. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what we, when I was in the Army in, in Germany, yeah. uh, that's what we, we did. You know, what's the, what are the other, you know? And the thing is, is and one of the problems with Cold War is it shuts down your la learning. Yeah. And uh, in that period of time from the 1940s, up to the current time with Cuba, now, there was a time in the 1870s back that way where there was, uh, you had to take over of Cuba, you had to take over of Venezuela, you had to take over of uh, um, Costa Rica, Guatemala, and you can go on and on. It's since the 1850s, 1860s, you know, colonization, it's uh, all of that stuff. And you do away with that. You get a lot of, well, you know, it's, it's, look at Canada, I mean, <laughs> look at Quebec, you speak a completely different language. Yeah. And you seem to get along. Yeah. You know, we're, we're lucky, we're 30 miles from the border, we're half an hour, you know? And uh, another half an hour and you're one, one of the biggest cities in North America, you yeah. And And, that, and then I think that's how these, mm -hmm. yeah, this part's, yeah. And baseball sort of exists as a common language. Got it. What, you know, what you Got mentioned it. in the article, the, the, down to it was like, you know, everyone knows the rules. So you have a diagram of a field on a napkin. It was like, yeah, I'm here, yeah. and that's, every, that's all anyone it's needs it. to know. Sure. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, it just improves, improves things. You know, it's, uh, you know, there's just a lot of examples of towns that we, or of uh, countries that we uh, uh, sort of went along with during the 1800s, 1880s, 1870s, um, and that we've always paid a price for. We've never been able to um, get to know them, yeah. you know? And, and this is a great way. Everybody's got their flaws, but you know, it's, uh, Let's see, we're, uh, Cuban ball players are tough competitors from a young age. Havana, city of uh, 2.1 million, didn't know it was that, has only 16 teams for 11 to 12 year olds age group. By comparison, Burlington, with a population of 42,000, had eight teams last year. The Vermonters lost 9-0, 9-1, 13-3, and 17-5 to over the first four days. On the team's fifth and final day, they faced their biggest challenge yet. La Habana, the Havana provincial team, a team composed of the best 11 and 12 year olds in the country's biggest uh, province, serve as an academy team for the uh, Havana Industrials, that's the pro team. Mm -hmm. And lucky for the Vermonters, players and coaches from the other side switched teams before they started a the game. Coach Cutter said Habana definitely had some players with major league potential uh, if, if the embargo was opened up. The Vermont group uh, visited local sites when not on the baseball diamond. The team's uh, packed uh, schedule uh, included a daily lecture, a cultural visit, practice, a baseball game in the afternoon, and a post-game dinner with their Cuban um, opponents. They tour Old Havana, visited Ernest Hemingway's house, uh, took a dip in the ocean at the Playa del Este, and experienced the ceremonial ca cannon firing at a Spanish fort. Um, so the, you know, the cultural experience existed outside of the field as yeah. well. Yeah. And it was, it, it was an yeah. overall good learning opportunity for... Yeah. It, it, uh, they basically had a, a morning program and an afternoon program kind of thing. We're, we're starting to run low on time, unfortunately. I wonder, do you have any major takeaway from a trip of this level? And if, if, if this is something that you think, you know, yeah. other groups should be encouraged to take? Um, what we're missing and things of what we're missing and what we can do combined. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, um, 
You know, there's all sorts of things that, that gotten away over the years. And we're, in my opinion, we're in the 1800s as far as opening up to these countries, yeah. you know, and there's a lot. But basically, mm -hmm. you're talking agriculture, fruit, food production, yeah. and this kind of thing. Um, you know, we developed that, and we have used that in a, not for the best pur yeah. not for the best purposes here either. And know? and that's sort of the magic of baseball, isn't it? Over the past, you know, it's a it's a it's a game that has existed for a little more than a century, yeah. and in its different eras and histories, has been a very potent reflection point of where we are as a as a country yeah, between true. the industrial revolution and yeah. and western expansion and and now in a post globalist society because i know the majors there's a lot of um, channeling between these spanish speaking countries yeah. less so cuba because of the history of the embargo but places like the dominican republic and yeah yeah and ecuador it's, it's, you know yeah. um, it, it 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 really bothers me uh, as I get older, <laughs> um, about these situations. Uh, Cuba's a very productive place. And I used to get that feel when I was in the Army in Germany, in Berlin. Um, but that was a different setup. That was really quite different. Um, the Cuba situation isn't you know, there's there's a lot of kids that drew. If you you had a large program like that, um, I think you'd have. Well, I don't think I know we'd have a standard of living about like Quebec or Canada, and mm -hmm. which is pretty strong right yeah. now. And, and you know, nobody. We live here in Burlington, and we learn French so we can communicate better, <laughs> it's rather than going in and shooting somebody or whatever. Um, I don't know, that's just, you know. Well, yeah. Tom, I can go on for hours, but I think uh, we're... Yeah, I know, that's just, this is... <laughs> I love my, to talk baseball. Uh, there's other things I'd like to talk about but later. I mean, this is like, a, we got to the, you know, it's pretty much time up. <laughs> There's always next month. Thank Don, you. thanks so much. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for watching Town Meaning TV. You can find more of our shows and more information about our programs at cctv.org. Thank you. Thank you.